So I'm Terry Orr Weaver, and I want to tell you a little bit today about our research. Um, I grew up in Southern California, and I never thought I would be interested in science, but I got really excited about science from a wonderful high school chemistry teacher. So um, when I was an undergraduate, I studied chemistry, and then I've moved more and more into biology. Um, so what my lab is interested in is how cell division is regulated during development. So the question we're interested in, how does an organism go from being a single cell, when it's a fertilized embryo, to an adult? So how does it end up with the right number of cells, the right type of cells, in the right place? That's the question we're interested in. And what it requires that we understand is how DNA gets replicated and how chromosomes get partitioned to give two daughter cells. So we like to do genetics and we uh, want to discover new genes that regulate the process of cell division and in particular to find out how the coordination occurs between cell division and the developmental cues that are happening uh, to set up the body. So, how do we study this? Uh, the way we study this is to use this wonderful organism, Drosophila, uh, these tiny flies that you may have seen on your bananas. There's lots of advantages to studying flies. And actually, let's go to the lab and I'll show you some of those. You might ask, why should I care how this little fruit fly gets built? And the reason is that What's been discovered over the past few decades is that the same toolkit that builds this fly's body uh, is the same one that builds a human body. So the same toolkit that decides where head will be and where tail will be is exactly the same toolkit that in your body determines where your head will be and where your tail will be. And, and in addition, the same regulatory genes control how these cells divide and how your cells divide. So by discovering um, these new genes in this organism, we find new genes whose regulation is critical to prevent cancer. So let's go look at um, what some of the experimental advantages are to using this, this organism. So there are wonderful experimental advantages to this organism. One, what we're growing it on is simply cornmeal and molasses. It's cheap. Uh, two, these in two weeks, these organisms have reproduced progeny, so it's very fast. And three, if you look in this room, we have 6,000 different stocks in this room. So you can see we can easily store a large collection of mutants. We can basically uh, study the function of every gene in the genome and have all these stocks and just think about how much space it would take to ha try to have 6,000 mice. But these little organisms allow us to be able to have mutants for every gene in the genome. We can understand the function. We can discover these new genes that regulate cell division um, and then uh, use that as a way to identify critical new regulators important in human health and disease. The approach we started with was to use genetics to discover new genes that regulate cell division, genes that have turned out to be important in regulating cell division in humans and whose regulation is essential to prevent cancer. So we started kind of as geneticists, one gene at a time, but being in this community uh, as biology has uh, evolved to looking at things at a genomic level. We've now been able, because of the resources and the colleagues around us, to shift to really study things more at a genomic level, to study how is the whole genome duplicated. Um, that's because of these wonderful collaborations with our colleagues here. Uh, it's because of students who know biology but also know computational science and who aren't afraid to use interdisciplinary approaches. So I'm challenged by my students, my students teach me new things and they've been really critical uh, in taking us into new areas and new approaches to look at problems.